The Lord be with you, everybody. It's good to see you this morning on Remembrance Sunday. Last night, I was with my bubble, uh, somewhat celebrating the news from across the Atlantic. And it occurred to me that it is something pertinent for us today on Remembrance Sunday. In her speech, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris said, that America's democracy is only as strong as our willingness to fight for it. And President-elect Joe Biden made reference to the phrase from Martin Luther King, who himself was paraphrasing a Unitarian minister, Theodore Parker. The moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Today, we remember those who have fought against fascism and the threat of fascism for the freedoms that democracy offers. Chiefly, those who paid with their lives in our world wars. But may we be ever mindful of the many other ways that people have protected and safeguarded the world from oppressive regimes. And we remember those whom we have loved and lost, following on from All Saints and All Souls last weekend. On that note, it is my duty to inform you of the deaths of Amalia, beloved organist at Haley, who peacefully died after a short illness this week. And Alistair, retired priest from our community at Richmond Village. And so we remember them and hold them in prayer, along with their families, friends, and all who mourn. Now, for those of you who are curious or concerned about the impact of this second lockdown on our church buildings and our worship together, there are going to be conversations happening this week among the ministry team and the PCCs. And there'll be more details in this morning's notices at the end of the service. But our gathering to worship online continues as it has done all year. So let us pray. Glory to the holy and undivided Trinity, God who is three in one and one in three. Who is beyond us, among us, within us. Who was and is and is to come, world without end. Amen. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light, grace, and peace be with you. And also with you. That got away from me a little bit there. Apologies. We meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations. That all people may live together in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who, in bereavement, disability and pain, continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives, in world wars and conflicts, past and present, have been given and taken away. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all, and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. 
Christ, have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is to that great tune, the Old Hundredth, and it is All People That on Earth Do Dwell. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her, and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care, because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths, and meets them in every thought. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The parable in today's gospel is a thought-provoking one, and it would be good to preach on it, not least in order to tell the story of the elderly and rather old-fashioned priest who had been asked to preach on this story uh, in the chapel of a boy's public school. As he came to the end, he gazed at the serried ranks of testosterone fueled adolescents and asked them, and when the bridegroom comes, will you be found waking with the wise virgins or sleeping with the foolish virgins? History does not record the boy's response, but I have to say as an ex-headmaster, that's when you get to know what the discipline in your school is really like. But our focus today is, and indeed should be, remembrance. 
I've been attending Remembrance Sundays, uh, uh, parades and services um, until I came to Whitney 18 years ago. And then for the 35 years prior to that, mainly in or with schools. Um, and this is the first Remembrance Sunday I can remember when we've not been able to gather around a war memorial for the time honoured liturgy, though we are sharing some of it in this service. We know its origins when people sought to honour the members of the armed forces killed in the First World War, the Great War, and then it was extended to include those killed in the Second World War. And slowly, year by year, we've also remembered those who died in subsequent conflicts of the Falklands, Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan, and with an increasing understanding of the impact of combat on those involved, we've also given thanks for the courage and service of men and women seriously injured in body, mind or spirit by their experience of combat. And today we would include those who've been killed as members of the police, fire and ambulance services, and indeed members of the general public who, who have risked their lives and too often died going to the help of other people caught up in terrorist incidents or in natural disasters. It's absolutely right that as individuals, as a community and as a nation, we should remember and honour them with great gratitude for their courage, their service and their compassion. And indeed, if we stop doing that, then the nation would have started to lose its soul. And if we need a sign of the importance of remembrance to us uh, as Christians, then remember that in every communion service, one of the major components of the Eucharistic prayer is the anamnesis, remembrance, when we're reminded of Christ's command at the Last Supper, as Luke and Paul tell us, to do this in remembrance of me. We're called to remember Christ's sacrifice on the cross for our salvation. We're called to remember as well the sacrifice of their lives by other people also in the service of us all. But true remembrance is not just about looking to the past with gratitude. If that's all we do, then there's a danger of remembrance simply becoming nostalgia. Remembrance also involves what we do in the present as we look outwards and what we plan to do in the future as we look forwards. Remembrance involves patience today, for, uh, I'm sorry, involves penitence today for our failings in the past, failings of courage, of wisdom, of care and charity for other people of seeing others as objects to be exploited and not as people made in God's image, people to be loved, as well as penitence for our arrogance and desire for power as individuals and as nations. And remembrance of the future demands that we follow the example of those we remember today who gave what President Abraham Lincoln called the last full measure of devotion and commit ourselves anew to working for peace and justice in the world, to the increase of the kingdom, the kingship of God here on earth. As we look round the world at the violence and division in the United States, in France, in Austria, in so many other places in the world, the need is as great as it has ever been. It's easy to make pious promises and statements to proclaim, for example, Black Lives Matter, but we require action and we require it urgently. 
if we take that action, our remembrance of and gratitude for the sacrifice of those whose names adorn our war memorials and who we remember today will continue to bear real fruit in the years to come. And so perhaps at the end, I can go back briefly to today's gospel and to the bridesmaids. They needed to remember, even if it was only to buy oil for their lamps, so that they could do the task uh, in the wedding to which they'd been called. So like them, we too need to keep awake and act with urgency in the light of the challenge that lies ahead. Because like them, we know neither the day nor the hour when the bridegroom will come and hold us to account. Amen. For the poppy. We are now going to join, hopefully, the BBC Live, if we are able to, um, and we will um, mark this time as we approach 11 o'clock um, with the Cenotaph in London. Um, the BBC Live, as it is streamed, might be slightly later than accurate time, so lest I get complaints from people it wasn't entirely at 11 o'clock we will be as close as we can be to the live feed if that will be particularly offensive i suggest you um pause the sound on this and go to your television um, but hopefully it will work as we stream that to you in a moment Commanding London District, Major General Christopher Geeker, and the Chief of Staff, Colonel Bagshaw, and the aide de camp from the Welsh Guards, Captain Orm Clark. And they're followed by the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, the leader of the Labour Party. Behind him, Ian Blackford of the SNP, Ed Davey for the Liberal Democrats, 
Jeffrey Donaldson for the Democratic Unionist Party, former Prime Ministers John Major, Tony Blair, David Cameron, Theresa May, Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, Liz Savile Roberts, representing Plaid Cymru, Rishi Sunak, Chancellor of the Exchequer, and Ben Wallace, Secretary of State for Defence. And behind them, the service chiefs, led by General Sir Nicholas Carter, the first Sea Lord Admiral Tony Rudakin, Chief of the General Staff, General Sir Mark Carlton Smith, and the Chief of the Air Staff. And behind them, the representatives for the Merchant Navy and Fishing Fleets, David Appleton, Air Transport, Auxiliary Association, Minnie Churchill, and the Civilian Services, Roy Wilshaw, all carrying their wreaths. And they're followed by a very reduced number of High Commissioners. Only five here today, usually over 40. But Malta, Bangladesh, Malawi, Papua New Guinea, St. Vincent and the Grenadines are all here laying wreaths on behalf of other members of the Commonwealth. Priti Patel on the left, the Home Secretary, Norman Fowler, the Lord Speaker, and the Speaker of the House of Commons, Lindsay Hoyle. the ambassador of Nepal and Ireland, and then the many representatives of the faith communities. There are filing behind the balustrade there. There are 10 Christian denominations, and in addition to them, Jewish, Islamic, Hindu, Buddhists, Zoroastrian, Baha'i, Jains, Mormon, spiritualists, and humanists. Over the years, their number has grown at this ceremony. So it's nearly two minutes now until 11 o'clock and the two minutes silence. So this is the seen this morning, how very different from what we're used to. Far apart, everybody's standing. But the politicians led by the Prime Minister there. Waiting to lay their wreaths. The members of the religious denominations you see standing behind the balustrade. This every effort being made to keep people apart from each other. In a moment, the royal party who'll be laying wreaths at the Cenotaph will come out onto Whitehall, led by the Prince of Wales, and the Queen will be watching from the balcony. The Prince of Wales comes out first, followed by the Duke of Cambridge, the Princess Royal, Her Majesty the Queen, who watches from the balcony as members of the royal family take their place to the north of the Cenotaph. The Prince of Wales, who'll be laying the Queen's wreath on behalf of the whole nation. And so we wait for Big Ben to strike and the two minute silence at 11.
the last post sounded by the Royal Marine Buglers, and before them you saw the King's Troop on horse guards with a gun signal ending the two-minute silence. And now the first wreaths will be laid, the first one by the Prince of Wales on behalf of the Queen. So we now continue with our service and Lieutenant Colonel David Smith will continue with us representing the British Legion. They shall grow not old as we that are left go old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the and in the morning we will remember them. We will, we will remember them. Ever living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. On this Remembrance Sunday, we acknowledge that memory comes from God and that we are able to remember others because God first remembers us. Thus says the Lord, I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. To pray is to remember and to lift that memory upwards to God. And so we remember with love those whom we love, especially those from whom we are parted because of lockdown restrictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with joy those who have lit up our lives, but whom we see no more. Today we give thanks for the life of Rabbi Jonathan Sachs and the lives of our own dear Amalia and Alistair be with their families and all who mourn at this time. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We remember with attentiveness those who have no one to remember them, whose suffering goes unwitnessed, whose passing unmarked. In particular, we pray for adults and children who suffer violence and abuse in the home, made worse by lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with care those who can no longer remember for themselves, especially those affected by dementia living in care homes who are unable to receive family visits. Be present with them and bless all who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with sadness those who have died or been injured and disabled in war. Those who have died from or been disabled by COVID or other illnesses and those who grieve them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with gratitude all those who give sacrificially for the health and protection of others, even risking and laying down their lives. Bless frontline health and social care staff, key workers, and on this day, especially men and women of the armed forces who guard our peace and our freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with compassion those who have been forgotten or passed over, those facing poverty and homelessness because of COVID, especially those whose livelihoods have been affected, refugees who flee war zones and persecution with nothing. And we continue to pray for the work of food banks, international aid agencies, and our local charities, Beesum, Heart, and Open Doors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with wonder and with contrition our beautiful but troubled and broken world this planet and its peoples. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and political leaders across the world as they face unprecedented challenge of the pandemic. And we give thanks for the election of a new president of the USA, praying for a peaceful transfer of power in that nation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. To crown all things. There must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole. So let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with, you. with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Our second hymn today is to the tune Thaxted, 
um, adapted from the planets by Holst and it's Across the Generations. Made in God's image and formed by God's love, let us pray in the spirit as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Jesus, we believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. We love you above all things, and we desire you in our souls. Though we cannot receive you in bread and wine, may we now still receive you in our hearts. Trusting in your gracious presence, we welcome and embrace you, and we rejoice in the promise 
that nothing can separate us from your love. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is God is our strength and refuge.
when you go home, tell them of us and say, to your tomorrow, we gave our today. Blessed God, help us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Help us who here have rejoiced and been glad to stand with those who are persecuted and reviled. Help us who here have glimpsed the life of heaven to strive for the cause of right and for the coming of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And so we say the grace together. The, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and, the, and love the love of God, God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Friends, it's been good together to remember Remembrance Sunday and to pray with one another, um, even if we're not able to be together. On Remembrance Day itself, um, as we come to the 11th, um, the Whitney Town Council are releasing a video um, which will be available online and we will try to make sure that that is linked up to the Benefits website so that you can follow that as well. Huge thanks to all of you who are continuing to support the work of the Benefice financially and also the hardship. Fund.
um, really makes a huge difference. Um, and many thanks to all who are continuing to support. Obviously, our costs do continue um, even in these peculiar times. On the 9th of December, we have an Advent quiet day from 10 till 3. And if you'd like more details, please do speak to the Reverend Joy Hance or contact Michelle at the parish office. This Wednesday, we have our next drinks party at half past seven. Um, the theme will be remembrance and thinking on war themes in terms of we're having some war poetry, some war songs and things like that. We could do with a few more acts or a number more acts. So if you would like to offer something, um, do please be in touch with me. Um, but we very much look forward to Wednesday evening and I hope that many of you will be able to join us for that. We are, as was said at the beginning, um, now in lockdown two, um, and that means that we're not able to have our public services, as I hope you are all aware. Um, the guidance does keep changing. It is a complex and demanding time, um, and we're doing our very best to keep things up to date with that. Um, as Ross mentioned, the ministry team and then the PCCs will be having to make some further decisions. But currently we are able to offer individual prayer for people in our churches. Um, but it looks as though the guidance is really saying that is for one person or persons who live together in the same house to be able to access. And we're just working through how best we can manage that process. Um, but it is important to note that our churches aren't sealed as they were last time in lockdown one. This morning, I hope that we have been joined um, by Esther, um, and Esther Brazil is a student at Cudston um, who is with us, and I'm hoping, Esther, that you might be able to unmute yourself. Um, I'm just inviting you to do so. Um, I thought it would be fun for you to be able to say hello. Um, but just before we do that, James, can you unfreeze the spotlight on me? Because otherwise people won't be able to see Esther when she's speaking. Um, so we'll just um, do that. Lovely. I think we're going. So Esther, are you there? Yes. Hello. Excellent. Hi, Esther. Great. <laughs> um, really good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, you are one of the students at Cudston um, at the moment, and you're just starting a placement with us, which has to be the weirdest placement ever because um, it's a distance one. I thought what might be fun, Esther, is if you can just say a brief hello, um, a very, very brief summary of where you've come from in the background of your life and where you find yourself now. Absolutely. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. I have, I'm originally American. I grew up in Asia um, and have lived in Oxford 15 years and I come to ordination training from a background in classical music. I have two children and a husband who's a violinist. That's me really. <laughs> Fantastic, Esther, brilliant, thank you. We really look forward to, to working with you a little bit um, and to supporting you in your training and formation um, and our prayers for you. So I'm just gonna pray for you briefly now. Thank you. Gracious God, we give thanks for Esther as she continues her formation and training at Cudston. We thank you for leading her to us to share in a pastoral placement here. And we pray that you will richly bless her during this time, that she may know your spirit at work within her as she grows and develops ready for ordained ministry. Be with her and her family at this time and give her the gift of holy wisdom. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Great. Thanks, Esther. We look forward to hearing from you more in the weeks to come, but really great you're able to join us today. Thank you. Finally, from me, um, just to say that we will be moving into breakout rooms, I think. I'm looking at James to see whether he's expecting that. Um, it's, no, not breakout rooms. James is not expecting that. Can you just give me a clearer sign, James? I Sorry, think... I think it was breakout rooms last week. I don't know. I may be wrong. Well, maybe it's, if it is breakout rooms, I, I can do it. I'm so um, sorry. I that's don't quite right. Richard, about that. Richard, can we have a definitive call from you? Which week is it? I get so confused on this. Can you? I only... think it's breakout rooms. I think breakout, breakout rooms. Break... That's not a problem. We'll breakout rooms in a minute. James will just get that going. So do make yourselves a cup of tea, coffee, whatever, if you'd like to, and then you'll get put into a breakout room. Esther, that's going to be a weird experience for you because you're going to end up in a breakout room with absolutely nobody who you know. But people probably won't know each other anyway because the people from five churches so it can all happen together so huge thanks um for everyone who's taken part this morning particularly david um for his fantastic sermon um and really good to be together the service will be online um and um do catch up with it there if you would like to or point others to that um and finally